SpaceX is working on a project so amazing that it's leaving everyone else in the dust. Even NASA can't believe what they're seeing. In the heart of the rocket world, SpaceX is causing a massive stir. They're doing things at Starbase so fast. Building, testing, fixing, making things better, and getting bigger. While everyone's excited about Starship 25's booster and what the FAA says, something else incredible is happening right inside NASA. Starbase is the world's first true spaceport. Located in South Texas, it's home to SpaceX's next-generation Starship rocket factory and launch pads, and is known as the gateway to Mars among the space community. This location will serve as the launch site for dozens, if not hundreds, of Starship flights every month. The scale of the facility at Starbase is unparalleled, exceeding the capabilities of any other rocket company. Even NASA, the largest government-run space agency in the US, cannot match the complexity of the launch infrastructure in Texas. In April, Starbase witnessed the launch of the world's largest and most powerful rocket. Moreover, the site is currently preparing for the second Starship launch scheduled for October. Mass prototype production and ongoing tests are continuously conducted in preparation for this upcoming launch. In fact, Elon Musk's ambitions go beyond Starbase, with a desire to make Starship a common mode of transportation around the world. Elon intends to establish a launch network more extensive than we might think. The first location he's aiming for is the launch facility in Florida. In late 2021, SpaceX finally began constructing the second iteration of Starship's first Florida Pad Orbital Launch Site 2 is still collocated at Kennedy Space Center's LC-39-8 Pad, which SpaceX leases from NASA. Because of NASA's trepidation at the thought of a Starship failure indefinitely delaying SpaceX from completing its crew, Dragon or Falcon Heavy contracts for the agency, the company deprioritized Starship's Florida Pad slowing progress, SpaceX has nonetheless made significant progress. In 13 months, SpaceX has created foundations, modified one of Pad 39, A's giant spherical tanks to store cryogenic methane, installed miles of plumbing, built and assembled a second skyscraper-sized Starship launch tower, installed the legs of the pads, Orbital Launch Mount, or OLM, installed a water deluge system at the base of the OLM, assembled most of the Orm's donut-like mount off-site, constructed a new super-sized storage tank, and delivered a forest of smaller storage tanks. SpaceX has also completed the fabrication of a massive pair of steel arms, transported them to Pad 39A, attached them to a wheeled vehicle, and installed the structure on the Starship launch tower in Florida. SpaceX employees have affectionately dubbed these arms chopsticks, and they are an essential part of what's CEO Elon Musk refers to as Mechazilla. Mechazilla refers to the combined launch tower and arms that SpaceX is designed to catch, lift, stack, and fuel, both stages of the Starship. Once completed, the tower's arms in Florida will be capable of precisely catching handling, stacking, and unstacking Starship in super-heavy spacecraft, even in relatively windy conditions. To be honest, building the Starship launch tower is an engineering feat of great magnitude. Far from being easy, many engineers even consider this ground structure to be more challenging than the production of the Starship spacecraft itself. However, SpaceX has not only one launch tower in Texas, but has also constructed an additional launch tower in Florida during the initial rocket dusting phase. Furthermore, in Florida, SpaceX has set numerous records that specifically make any rocket company or space organization, even NASA, have to take notice. The Falcon 9 is truly a workhorse in Florida. To gain a deeper understanding, let's first talk about Falcon 9's latest record. Currently, Falcon 9's completed 66 launches, but only after the 62nd launch that Falcon 9 achieve a remarkable feat, breaking the record for 61 Falcon flights in a single year. This record was set at the end of 2022, eclipsing the previous record right at the launch site in Florida. This is indeed equivalent to a launch every 3.9 days, a substantial uptick on 2022's average flight every 5.9 days. To illustrate that rapid pace, SpaceX hit its 10th launch of 2023 by February 12th, its 20th by late March, its 30th in the second week of May, its 40th in mid-June, and its 50th and 60th at the tail ends of July and August. Setting that against last year, it took the fleet until the second week of March 2022 to hit 10 flights mid-May to reach 20, mid-July to achieve 30, early September to get to 40, and the beginning of November to pass 50, with 2022's total of 61 launches achieved by New Year's Eve. A quick back-of-the-envelope calculation makes it not unreasonable to expect more than 90 missions before the curtain falls on 2023. Nearly 60% of SpaceX's missions this 
this year involved deploying Starlink internet satellites into orbit. Since the beginning of the year, SpaceX has launched three crewed missions to the ISS, along with three Falcon Heavy rockets. It's almost needless to say that the primary factor driving SpaceX's increasing launch cadence is the company's ability to reuse rocket boosters and first stage components. In July, SpaceX launched its Falcon 9 booster for the 16th time, as engineers extended the first stage's lifespan from 15 flights to 20 missions. According to SpaceX, this extended utility is currently reserved for Starlink launches. Furthermore, SpaceX's launch teams have been optimizing their launch sites for faster turnaround times. The turnaround time at SpaceX's busiest launch site in Florida has been reduced to less than four days between missions this year. This is crucial because SpaceX's other launch facility in Florida has been constrained by Falcon Heavy missions and crewed launches, which typically require more preparation time for each flight. In California, SpaceX's West Coast launch site has hosted 18 Falcon 9 missions. The Falcon 9 launch site in California has an older design, taking more time to set up for each mission, primarily due to its robust back structure resembling a vertical gantry structure alongside the rocket during the final countdown. Unlike their Florida counterparts, the robust backs in California do not retract from the rocket during liftoff. This means that the sturdy back structure has to endure a fiery plume of exhaust as the Falcon 9 ascends, leading to more refurbishment requirements between launches. Despite this challenge, SpaceX's ground team in California has still managed to execute Falcon 9 missions with turnaround times as short as 10 days. Out of 44 other SpaceX launches this year, all have taken off from Florida. The spaceport there has already supported 46 orbital launches this year involving SpaceX, ULA, and Relativity Space. This has surpassed the 57 launches it hosted last year. Officials from US, Space Force's Space Launch Delta East, the agency overseeing launch operations from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station and Kennedy Space Center, have efficiently coordinated their activities to meet the increasing demand for launches, mainly driven by SpaceX, in the remaining quarter of the year. SpaceX already has a packed schedule of pre-scheduled launches, not to mention their own Starlink launches to reach 100 launches in 2023. This will be a busy period. There are two scheduled Falcon Heavy rocket launches slated for this year. The first one, set for October 5th, involves the launch of NASA's Psyche asteroid probe from Florida later in the year. Another Falcon Heavy launch is planned for a mission with the US Space Force in November. SpaceX has intentions to conduct a Falcon 9 rocket launch that'll carry a commercial lunar lander developed by Intuitive Machines, a Houston-based company with aspirations of achieving the first privately owned spacecraft landing on the moon. Moreover, there are two resupply missions to the ISS in the pipeline, both utilizing Falcon 9 rockets. One mission will employ SpaceX's Dragon cargo capsule, while the other will transport a Northrop Grumman supply ship into orbit. It's noteworthy that this marks the initiation of at least three Northrop Grumman resupply missions utilizing SpaceX rockets after the retirement of their Antares launcher. Lastly, the Missile Defense Agency has plans to launch the hypersonic and ballistic tracking space sensor mission into orbit later this year using a Falcon 9 rocket. This innovative sensor is equipped with improved sensitivity specifically designed for the detection and tracking of hypersonic missiles. These missiles pose unique challenges due to their lower heat signatures compared to larger long-range ballistic missiles, making them more elusive for existing missile tracking satellites. That's everything for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.